And hello and welcome Patricia Pettersson from Hennes and Maurits, Hennes och Maurits, as we say in Sweden. So, uh, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, and you are here today because of a, well, a guest lecture in, in one of our first year courses in computer science uh, at Linnaeus University. Uh, and, uh, well, you're the product, I, I see if I get this right, so product area lead engineer. Yes. That's your title. That's correct? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, we will understand uh, later what does it mean when I talk about our organization what this product area is. <laughs> yeah. And 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 why you are here and why you are invited to to well a, a, f like a first year course as a guest guest speaker for computer science engineers. That that is might seem far fetched for bringing in a, like a fashion company to to this kind of to this kind of uh, course but i would say it will all make sense uh, because it's not only about fashion it's not only about clothing or or like consumer products it's something else as well isn't it Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, it would not be possible without technology. That's the point. We yeah. cannot, uh, the world today is really about technology. Whatever, wherever you go, it's always technology behind. Yeah. So, so the the, the real meaning of, of of this talk is to show like a sector of the software engineering industry that might be a little bit invisible for many students. You look for, okay, I want to develop software. And then, then you think about gaming and you think about developing applications. And, and, and well, there are, oh, I want to work at Google, Spotify, Facebook or something like that. But <laughs> there is software in all different areas of, of all companies are working with software. And there is a quote, if you Google it, you will find out a lot of interesting articles about it, but software is eating the world. It, it was a, a quote from Mark Andresin. Uh, I think it was in, in early 2010, 11 or something like that, uh, that discussed this, this matter that no companies, even if you're not working with software and you're actually, every, every company is in, becoming a, more or less a software company just because of the technology revolution so yes exactly so uh, i'll uh, uh, bring up your um, uh, your slide and you might also spend some time to introduce yourself because i've only mentioned your name and title so <laughs> so let's see we have now the slide in front of us so Great. So it's a good uh, thing that we're talking about the world and software eating the world and, and all this. So it's, um, yeah. So I really thank you. Thank, thank you for inviting me to talk about engineering. And before I start, I should congratulate you for choosing a profession that gives you uh, a world of possibilities because that's what it is. And you might uh, wonder why it's a world of possibilities. And I will tell it in just a, a, a moment. i tell you a, a, a real story and you understand what this world of possibilities mean. And, and then I will talk about a little about H&M Group, where I work today, and Business Techs, that is the organization I work as a product area lead engineer, and talk about uh, uh, our, the role of engineers at H&M Group, the competencies and our way of working. So, yeah. So, world of possibilities. My story, yes, I started, uh, I studied the, what is called data processing at that time in, <laughs> in the 80s in Brazil in the capital of Brazil, Brasilia, here in the middle of the country. And now the course is called Computer Engineering, but at that time was uh, data processing. And yes, I start programming those punch cards. Uh, and I start with Fortran and then Kobo and Algol. 
and it was a very different world at that time uh, we we did we wrote our programmers in the sponge cards and then we in machines like typing machines and they are making these holes and then we we take we took this uh, data deck and bring to the data center and le le left it with the operators and then it took two uh, it took two hours to get our program compiled so we bring it there we came to the university in the morning left it there went to classes and then we have some pause at 10 and then run back to the to the data center and got this this paper it was a printing and it was like this continuous stationary you probably haven't seen it uh, but it was very long with all the pages there together and uh, and then in this printing we got the first the all the program the the, the compilation errors or the compilation results and at the end we got the result of the the running itself and it happened sometimes that after two hours you come back and we got almost an empty page because it was a syntax error in the first line of the program and then okay then you go back to the machine fix it and put a, a dot or something like that that you forgot and then and then two hours more so it's a completely uh, different world. So I, uh, then, it's super interesting to hear about that, Patricia. I mean, look, the iteration loop of, of, I mean, what the students are doing today when they, when yes, direct, exactly. you, you get that feedback, feedback direct. <laughs> so. Yeah, and you think that it, if it takes one minute, it's too slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was uh, very different, but then I start working and I, uh, after I, I took my exam and I got my diploma in, in 86 and I start working and programming in a language called natural in this beautiful IBM terminals. Uh, and then quite in the beginning of my work, uh, um, they, oh, uh, they got this, um, we got a, a PC and then I could also uh, program in basic. So I have this too at, the, at my first uh, job. And I was working there a couple of years and then I decided to, to take a master exam. So I moved to another city close to Sao Paulo in Brazil yet still. And, and then I got my own computer to write my thesis on. So I have one computer in a room and I could sit there because at the work it was shared. We didn't have our own computer. It was sharing our, around the, the programmers. But yeah, then I started my, my thesis in electrical engineering, but I was working with programming then uh, in C. And then I finished my thesis in 92. I master thesis and start working at IBM in Brazil. And I was working there in different languages, different technologies, and the things were evolving. evolving. And then in, uh, in 96, I was in the United States in a technical conference, and I met a Swede. And in 97, I moved to Stockholm. And it was very interesting because everything is new, uh, the country, the culture, culture, the language. I didn't understand the world of people talking on streets or on TV or newspapers, but I have my engineering skills. So I could immediately when I moved to Sweden, uh, I, I started working. I didn't have any problem. Just two weeks later, the, the, the two, two weeks after the, I landed in Sweden, I started working at IBM in Sweden and it felt natural so it was really uh, interesting and then in 97 i started programming in java java 1.1 maybe uh, you have have heard about that <laughs> uh, and um, and then i was in the us and uh, wrote uh, a couple of books uh, like technical books and then i like a Java a lot, and then I start working in some some microsystems that are the 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 ones that created Java, and I was working at the Sun Java Center, as it was called, 
And then after some years, you know what happened in the beginning of the year 2000 uh, with the uh, Sun was bought by Oracle. And then I start working at a consulting company and then I'm the agent group. So my point is, uh, the world keeps changing. All the things we have, uh, new programming languages, languages coming, we have new platforms, we have new methodologies, new ways of working. Uh, we can maybe move to another country, but the engineering skills, they are always uh, useful. You have your skills that with you and they are very similar uh, despite things. So the thing is never stop learning. You need always, of course, to to learn new technologies and things coming on. But then you have the world of possibilities in front of you if you if you do this. So that's the, the thing. It's a very good area. You have all possibilities in the world. So as I talked, I've been in different uh, companies and right now I'm at H&M Group. Uh, I'm product area lead engineer there. And H&M Group is a family of brands and business uh, that make possible for customers around the world to express themselves uh, through fashion and design and, and choose uh, a more sustainable, sustainable lifestyle. So it's very important for H&M just the sustainability aspect, as you might know. So H&M was founded in 47 in Westeros in Sweden and uh, by Earl Elling Persson. And now it's a global company with more than 70 countries, I think 75 the last count, more than 5,000 stores around the world and 180,000 employees. So maybe we don't think about that it's it's such a big uh, a company. Uh, and uh, Yes, so all brands have their unique identities, and I don't know if you knew that this, all these were H&M Group brands. We have Cars, Weekday, Monkey, Arcad, Found, all the stories, and of course H&M and H&M Home that are the most. For me, this is this is new. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, I might not be like the the biggest uh, shopper of of, uh, of fashion, but um, uh, it's it's really interesting that there are so many brands within within like the H&M company. So yeah. yeah. Cool. So I have learned something new. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Yeah>. good. <laughs> yeah. So. An H&M group, the, the whole group, has a vision, and that is this, to be the most loved design group in the world. To brands, we offer fashion, design, and services that enable people to be inspired and to express their own personal style, making it easier to live in a more circular way. So it's interesting that also many people think about H&M, oh, it's fast fashion and then, but it's more and more, we are, since we are so big, we are working a lot with this sustainability around the world. And of course there's technology behind that as well, that we need to invent new things. And uh, it's really great stuff. If you look into the H&M group uh, page, for example, you could see if you're interested in like sustainability and this new, really exciting stuff <laughs> uh, going on. Uh, and then to increase this and to make it possible, of course, we have uh, BIA also a technology front runner. So we cannot uh, to be able to, to do all these things that we, we have in our vision. And that's what coming. Oh, sorry. It was, it's a strange. Sorry about the the. I took the pic. The I don't understand. So we have the business tech, and the business tech is the the area where I I work. And the in the in the center of business tech, we have the products. And I will just tell in a short, very short. I will tell about the the products that are there. Uh, what are products? And the products, they are grouped in product areas and the product areas are grouped in, in different domains. 
So um, we have, for example, we could have a, a, a product that is a search for search for, for products or for I want to have a t white t-shirt and the search product. And then it would be in an area that is for product exploration, for example, could have different products that are related to that and in the customer domain. So have a, a, it's how we are organized. And then we have the different supporting functions as well. And we have uh, people working with technology in different uh, countries. So what is a, a product then? A product is formed around a mission to solve a unique customer or business problem. So as I, I mentioned, uh, we have uh, in we have a product to solve the checkout uh, customer, not problem, but uh, let's just say use case. Uh, or you have a product that uh, for the search or to, how you say? Yeah. And and uh, when 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 I mean, just one question about when yep. when we talk about products and and then related to software. I mean, uh, generally, I would say that the product is well. When, when I as a consumer want to buy something and I want to buy my my sweater or or whatever from H and M, but the product when we're talking about uh, what you're trying to talk about now, I guess, is a much broader view that the, the product is. It's not, not, it's not only the sweater, it, it is something else, or do I understand you correctly? Oh, yeah, it's not the sweater at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it's um, uh, in the, sorry, I just jumped for, I, I went too fast, sorry. Uh, because we talk about business tech, is, the, is, the, is where the technology, uh, happens is how where you develop our technologies is the place we deliver these technological solutions to provide the business value to provide the the ability for H&M to have the sweater in the store so if you uh, think about uh, to to have the sweater in the store uh, we we have to someone need to design the sweater a designer and this person will design it in a, in a in a product in a CAD or some some tool, and then this 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 design this um, how say drawing needs to be sent to uh, some supplier in in a fabric and manufacturer somewhere that will do the sweater. But to send it, you need to also have the uh, select the supplier, you have to have a list of the suppliers, which kind of products they will deliver for you. Uh, and then you send the drawing to them and then you do and they do something in their factory and send back. And then you send back, it will be some logistics involved. And behind logistics, they're also tech because you need to choose to send, for example, the, the request to a company that to bring your things, put in a container and then send in a ship and this kind of thing. So behind all these steps, there is the technology, some technology involved it. And how it's how business tech is, is uh, building. It this is the technical organization that is providing all these technologies. So we are uh, we are how you say grouped in the different domains that are taking care of these different uh, customer uh, issues or or business issues. I, I would say so. We have for the customer domain, for example, all the technologies that are related to the the business areas that are working with customers. For example, for online, we have the checkout area, we have the search, and we have some uh, suggestions about, oh, you like, you seem to like red sweater, so look, look at this one. So there's technology behind this. There's some programming that is looking into what you have bought and what, what you have searched for, and this is some good suggestions. So we have this 
uh, all the so business tech is only about um, uh, technology it's where we are working on all these uh, things uh, is it more clear now or <laughs> it, I, I think it I... I, I I think it's it's more clear absolutely, but it's it's interesting that when when you as a consumer think about a product and when when you talk about business tech, it's it's you well sort of using the same word, but yeah. it's it's it it might be uh, seen as different things, or perhaps it is the, the same thing because the sweater is still a product of all yes all what has happened before. So yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The, the product here is in the meaning of the agile methodology that you call yeah. product. It's and that's the uh, next slide. What is a product? And the, a product in in business tech is uh, is formed around the how to solve something that you need to solve some business problem. So some echo. And so it's where the business uh, or the magic happens. It's where uh, we have a, in, a, in a product, we have a product owner, the team behind the product. We have usually a product owner. And then we have a couple of engineers that are working with that. And then a business expert, someone that is giving the, like the requirements, for example, that are talking with the stakeholders and understanding what is needed what do you need what do you need to do to to make this thing happens and then the engineers are implementing that and then the product owner is looking into the the roadmap what we are planning to do in next year or three years or something like that so it's uh, uh, then i don't know do you work with agile methodologies and backlogs do we have it in the course maybe later on uh, we, we we will uh, mention it but not much in this in this particular course but it is a part of the of the education absolutely yes yeah, yeah so yeah so you understand that later so you come back to this presentation <laughs> when you have uh, understand maybe the concept that the about the products that uh, yeah. when they have learned it a little more so it will make more sense maybe uh, understand that's not so easy if you yeah, but then uh, let's uh, just uh, jump into that and see what the engineers will do in this product teams. We call it product teams, and um, so engineering in, in at H and M Group, it is uh, it includes the design, build, test, deploy, and run of the products and platforms and services. So there are diff as you think about the the whole organization all the different domains and product areas and products inside the product areas uh, we have very different uh, skills needed depending on what we're working with if you're working with the logistics parts for example we have some kind of technology behind and some uh, pro problem pro programs and tools and if you were working in the online area you have completely different uh, programming language maybe or 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 tools that you use to develop the online shop for example for instance so there are lots of kinds of different engineers and uh, in, in a product team so you have some examples some specialization you could be a data engineering for example data engineer that works with data and analytics we could have a could be a mach machine learning engineering work with machine learning uh, algorithms and models and or it could be a software engineer a classical software engineer if you say so working with programming and run writing code and and doing that it could be a security uh, so that you make sure that all this uh, security uh, needs are met for GDPR and all, this, all, all, all the kinds of uh, security aspects as, uh, for the application. Or it could be also a technical engineer that works more with the infrastructure, with network, server, storage. So if you think, uh, if I think about the, the students in, in your course, 
that uh, they are doing this uh, this course as a computer engineer, then they could fit in any of these uh, specializations, for example, in the HNM group. It's just uh, how we where you choose to 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 be specialized. Yeah. When uh, when you, just one one question, you might come to that later. But when you're talking about uh, like an engineering team, so and and how 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 like how many people are are working in a project in a team um, like generally? A good question. Uh, in yeah. in a product team, uh, we say that, uh, and it's uh, very common in the in this agile way of working. If you're looking both at uh, Amazon and Spotify or Klarna or these companies, uh, we we call it the pizza team. Uh, so we, it's a team that, or two pizza teams then, uh, that the team should not be bigger than the size that you could share two pizzas. And, and it's about 10 people. It's not a Swedish pizza. In Swedish, we, in Sweden, we eat the whole pizza you, yourself usually. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> but if you go to uh, like uh, places that you slice the pizza, usually you can share if you sit in and working. So we call this uh, two pizza teams. Uh, so it's ten people uh, more or less, and then they are uh, in this pro. They are responsible for the the whole uh, product lifecycle. They should uh, do all these things. They are designing, building, testing, deploying, running. This ten people. Hmm. A good a note about that pizza team and the size and the cultural differences between the. the yes. <laughs> I haven't it's, thought about that before, so but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there could be two pizza teams with but only two people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and and then in in this uh, even in this specialization, you could get even more uh, deeper specializations. Uh, for example, if you're a software engineer, you could even be more specific and work with back end or front end or quality or be uh, release and deployment. Uh, so it even could be even more specialized. And, and here we talk a little, uh, not a little, but a lot about this T shaped engineer that you have the broad that you understand all this stuff, but you are very deep into one of the things. So it's very important also to think about that you, you are, you, sh you should not be specialize in it, only one thing or am I just back end I don't understand anything else it's very important that you understand the whole picture as well so we can talk with other other so if even if you are developing back end you should understand for example even the cloud infrastructure and you should understand the pro issues with the quality and tests and yeah so it's what we're looking into uh, people that are T-shaped, as we, as we say, or uh, so. If and then for a, so for a software engineer, it could be even more specialized in one of those. And for a technical engineer, for example, just examples, you could be also specialized in automation or physical infrastructure like servers and, and network or platforms, cloud, for example. So have different uh, specializations. And on top of that, <laughs> uh, as part of this uh, daily work, you also an engineer can also have like a, a hat, a part time, or it could be for a certain period of time, or all, all like an indefinite period of time. You could also have these other hats as an engineer. You could be also a test lead. You could be also a scrum master working this agile method, or it could be a a coach, you could be a requirement lead, or it could be a solution architect or deployment. So there are lots of hats that you can use uh, at h &M in our organization. So you could be uh, in working in a product team as a software engineer, doing some uh, front-end programming, and also being a secure champion if you are interested in, in security so you can help in helping the, the team around with security questions so it's a it's a very 
it's endless possibilities and combinations, as you might uh, think about all these different hats and specializations. And the, the interesting thing is that you you choose something, you don't need to, to work with that for the whole, your whole life. You can change. Now you are work front-end programming, and then next year maybe you want to be more specialized and learn more about the back-end so you can start doing this. So you have this very good uh, possibilities as well to change uh, the specializations and what we work with yeah. in different products as well. And I think that yes, from from your background, when when you talked about uh, what what like your journey from 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 <laughs> from starting with Fortran and and um, and <laughs> and <laughs> the basic comp uh, the programming basic and 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 further on to to Java and and all the companies you visited, so I I. I think that you might have worn a lot of these hats that you're showing, but they might have been called different names during during yeah. your career. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's it's interesting because in the beginning uh, there was no lot like this. Oh, I'm architect. I'm database specialist because uh, they are not specializations. So we are doing the whole stuff. We are doing talking with the stakeholders, understand the requirements, and doing the programming, both front end, back end, and database or whatever, and and also uh, testing, and and then as the time passed, then you got more and more specialized. That people are just very deep in database or just front end or back end, and now with this agile way of working and working the product teams. I think that is coming back, of course, in a different uh, clothing, but it's coming back as uh, that you expect it to be broader and understand the other things. Also, even if you have some specialization, you should not be very, very only database. You also need to understand requirements. You need to understand all the other stuff. And it's how how people are looking because these teams, uh, these agile teams, product teams are like all more or less self-contained. They are expected to do all the things, these 10 people. And of course, it's you cannot uh, uh, think that just one person will work with front end and one person with back end and one with database because if the person is sick, then everything stops. So that's why you need to be able to, to help each other and work with the different things, even if you're not very specialized and you are not the best one in this just database, for example. But you understand if your friend is, needs help with too much workload in database, just uh, this, this period, then you, should, uh, you can help. So it's very interesting that, the, as you mentioned, it was called something else, but uh, you've been working, wearing these yeah. hats. Yeah. And I think you point out something which I think is also important to to like give to the students that you're working in in a team rather than than on your own. So I yeah. guess that like the ability to to collaborate with with other people are like a very important trait. I guess so. Perhaps more important than being being the the best programmer or or what, what's your yeah. Your perspective on that. Yeah, that's a very good uh, introduction to the next slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it's uh, those that I've been talking about uh, and that you normally learn in a course is that what we call this hard engineering skills. It's like you know how to program, you learn to program, you learn a programming language and you know how to test and, and automate and build scripts or whatever. But it's Besides that, as an engineer, you need to have some other competences that are very, very important. And it, it's, uh, for example, curiosity. You need to, to, to want to learn new things, to see new things. You need to have initiative, just not wait for someone to give you, oh, do this program. You need to yourself think about new ways of doing, be, be creative and innovative. And you need to have these communication skills and uh, learn and ability in problem solving and commit and, and, and have ownership. Like, okay, if you say that you do something, like you, you do, you don't uh, let it go only. And then, of course, to, to have with the, 
with the personal skills to, to talk with people and to collaborate. So it's very, very important to have these uh, soft skills or how you call it. It's really... Yeah, and 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 that is also when you when you show this picture, and then I'm 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 you're from the industry. You've been working a long time in the industry and been following. So how is this best taught? Uh, so I mean, how what's what's like the best background for a student to to have in your sense? If you want them to be able to do all these things, maybe that's a hard question. I'm not sure, but. <laughs> You made this uh, soft skills or the hard skills? <laughs> yeah, but maybe maybe be, there is a combination of both. Um, so. Yeah, I think uh, some uh, key words here are this uh, curiosity, and as I mentioned, the first slide, slide in the, one of the first slide, never never stop learning, and of never uh, keep your yourself relevant uh, about with the technology but also be curious about what's happening in the world. And uh, yeah, so it's really important to to keep yourself up to date in the things, not just, uh, oh, as you mentioned, I'm the best one in this uh, gaming, pr programming game, and then I'm just keeping program because uh, all of a sudden there's new, new technology or new things coming on and you'll be obsolete. So it's very important to to keep your curiosity and keep your this uh, learning agility agility uh, in in how to say work with that all the time to learn new stuff so it's a, i think it's a key to be uh, yeah to keep the relevance yeah and then and then so and uh, i think it's uh, i i I really like when you paint out this picture because we we as like a university and, and having courses we we do like when the students are curious and uh, want to learn something from for themselves rather than not as us telling us them to what to learn if they go the extra mile that's absolutely a mm. good trait so uh, yeah. yeah but yeah, I don't. I don't have like a, a a clear answer on how to best do this. We try to do it as best as we can, but um, yeah. but nowadays I think it's a really thing that the, uh, in the industry we're talking a lot a lot about this a continuous learning or lifelong learning, and if you look, there's uh, it's endless possibilities today because I think even in university when you finish there's all these courses that you can keep taking in Sweden, it's very, very good of that. Uh, but they also have like LinkedIn learning. We have this Coursera, you have uh, lots of, uh, of uh, at h and we have, for example, Pluralsight as well. Uh, like doing some, <laughs> it's not a, how you say ads here, but uh, in this we have thousands of, uh, of different courses that people can learn. Oh, I want to learn more about uh, agile ways of working or about how we make better presentations. It could be anything. It doesn't need to be only a new programming language. It could be how to, to be a better coach or how to uh, reflect about my learnings, anything. And there are so many possibilities nowadays, of course, with the technology as well. Before I need to go to university and sit there or to a course, but nowadays with all the digital possibilities, it's really uh, much easier to, to do this, to, to keep your curiosity. And so, yes, and yeah. With all these different uh, skills and specializations and hats and what all these things, you might wonder, okay, what does an engineer do at H&M, what does a, a typical day would look like for an engineer? And I might say there's no one day like another. <laughs> so I was... Um, Paulo Coelho, I don't know if you know him, it's a Brazilian uh, uh, writer and he has uh, has millions of books around the world, I don't know how many languages, and I, I like him a lot. 
but he says this no no one day is like another and it's worth for life and i i guess that the university is the same for all of you <laughs> each mm -hmm. tomorrow has its special miracle its magic moment in which all the universes are destroyed and new stars are created it's really <laughs> about that there's no day and you create your own day and that's the good thing with this also agile way of working in these teams that uh, it's up to the teams to decide and to that's what we are working with so uh but of course it's not like uh, whoa uh, you don't know anything we work according to a methodology that gives us a frame uh, to work and what we're working with. So we work in what is called a product increment. It's a PI. So we have uh, that is 13 weeks. So every in the beginning of a product in a PI, we have a PI planning and, and then discuss what we are going to, to work in the coming uh, 13 weeks. It's a quarter, three months. And uh, in a, and then, of course, in this BI planning, you know more what you're going to do in the beginning of the quarter than uh, it, at the end. It's more detailed. Uh, and then we plan it. And then it's uh, in a PI, you have six sprints, two weeks each. And the last one is three weeks. And we call it innovation sprint. And because it's also very important to 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 keep uh, thinking about the future, not only working with your programming in the day to day, but being creative and then so we have this innovation sprint uh, to do things that uh, we maybe don't have time to do when you're really implementing stuff. So, and in a two weeks sprint, you have uh, a sprint planning in the beginning and the spring at the end of the sprint, we have a demo and a retrospective. So a demo that you show what you have been working these two weeks, and then a retrospective is where you were thinking about and you reflect about uh, how the work went. It does it went well. They have blockers and uh, uh, what should we start doing? What should stop doing? Keep doing? So we have a reflection, and at the end of the PI we also have a, a PI demo and retrospective, what we have accomplished in this uh, quarter. So we're working in this, oh, sorry. Oh, we work in this uh, frame, I should say. So even the days are very different, we have, we have a frame to work it. And then we have, uh, also, I forgot to mention in the backlog, uh, when I talk about the product, each product has a backlog and it's uh, based on discussions we have with the stakeholders, what they want to have for the product, for the future, new new features, new things that need to be implemented. Then we have this in a, in a backlog and then for each uh, PI planning, we decide, okay, which items are more prioritized this quarter. Oh, but this is this new look look and feel for the homepage, for example. Okay, let's work with that. And when we should work that? Oh, what are the activities or the small things? Oh, we need to do some programming here and there. And then we do it in sprint one or two and this kind of stuff. So we work with a backlog and the developers or the engineers who go there and pick the, the thing that they're going to work in the sprint in, and then for each day. Yes, and um, so, yes, from that picture, when when yeah. we when and you talk about like the the backlog, and then how is it like practically? You have a cross project team synchronization, so scrums of scrums, it says here. So, wh when when that happens, there needs to be a prioritiz prioritization. Oh, that's a hard word to pronounce. But <laughs> yeah. but how how does that actually look like? Is it, it's like I, I guess there are non-developers and and then like management involved in 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 certain parts of this process that actually says that this is more important than this is and 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 how does that work in in, in practice? Yes, we have uh, in the beginning, uh, before the beginning of HPI. Uh, we have the discussions because the teams, uh, they have their backlog and they think, okay, 
these are things that we talk with our stakeholders and they want us to implement but we are depending on this other stuff to be done uh, and that another team is doing that we cannot uh, influence so we need to to talk to the team so that we can go and talk to the other team and say okay we would like to do this we we need you to do this and if they say for example oh yeah we are planning to do this that as well for something else then you can agree and uh, and put your dependencies uh, and talk directly in the teams that's the the best uh, in the best of the world worlds and then but in in it it can happen that this other team say oh no but our stakeholders want want to prioritize something else uh, we cannot do this and then they they put this and talk to their yeah product area lead engineers for instance and product area managers and and say okay we need to do this we have this thing but we have a conflict with the priorities and then all this product area lead engineers will uh, sit and talk and see what are the the biggest uh, business value what are the most important and then we have these discussions and this and this uh, cross product team synchronizations if the teams they cannot solve themselves and then there's this uh, what is the bring the biggest the highest value and then we can go back to the teams and say okay but you prioritize this instead we have changed it so that's how it works so we have this we have these meetings of course it could happen at any sprint in fact uh, but uh, we have a big one before the the beginning of the product the pi planning because then we can have the inputs to the teams when they do their their the team planning itself then for for each team so mm. have, they have this input what they should prioritize or not otherwise they are quite um, uh, free i would say uh, to to talk with the stakeholders and and prioritize together with the stakeholders uh, because that's the stakeholders that know that what is more important or not that's why the this technology exists of course yeah. and how is information flowing from like down to uh, from, from 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 the bottom and 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 up so like the, if there is anything that is okay a, a, a team m might not be able to manage what they thought they were, were able supposed to manage or or thought they were going to manage and, and how is how is that done during the sprint so uh, during the sprint or like the product increment like the first and weeks so is is that like just a flexible approach that the information is handled by these weekly meetings or the, the yes. stand-ups? Yes, well, the daily stand-ups is mostly for the teams themselves when they say, yeah. oh, I have a blocker and this, and then they can lift if they have any real, real blocker that they cannot solve, then they yeah. would uh, go up and say, okay, this we need help with because it, of something. Uh, but uh, mostly they do in the retrospective when they sit at the end of the two weeks and say, okay, we planned to do all these things and we didn't uh, manage. Uh, why? And then they start uh, uh, looking into what could we have done differently to, to be able to do. Oh, maybe we are very optimist in the beginning of the sprint, for example, we thought mm -hmm. we could do all this. Or maybe someone gets sick, for example, and then it's yeah, that's uh, we understand. That's why we are not uh, we could could not do what we thought we could do. So that's uh, this is it's really flexible uh, how we we have it, and and every team and every product area is different. You could have depending on, of course, what are the the stakeholders and the products they are working with. It, some things are very must be very much faster than others. Uh, and then how this flow exists and the, the cadence of the head, they could have some uh, post checks every now and then and see how is it going. So it depends very much of the, the product uh, uh, mission, I would say, or the product itself, what mm -hmm. kind of thing. It's very different, very different technologies as well in the, the product. Some products we have, uh, developed from the ground uh, in Java and, or .NET in, in the at H&M. And some products we buy as a COTS, as a, for the cost, 
I think maybe tell about cuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of... please, please explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a, 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 pro, uh, a product that you buy like, like SAP or if you buy a Siemens product or uh, Teams or whatever, it's something yeah. that is uh, a pr made uh, uh, what I no, I just forgot to see the C, of the shelf. It's not custom of the shelf, but it's the but it's of, of the, the shelf. shelf. I had yeah. to Google it. So <laughs> what what they say the C commercial of commercial the shelf. yeah commercial yeah. is it? So that's that you it means that you get a box from the it wasn't the time that you got the box with the product. Okay, yeah. here you have your Visual Studio <laughs> in a yeah. box in a CD. Uh, so that's where the, the name comes from. Uh, so when, when you buy something that is done and you may do some only configurations or customizations. So we have this kind of, and you also have SaaS that is software as a service that you buy. For example, our, our payment payroll systems for paying the, the salary of the, of the employees. It's not anything that we develop ourselves because they're very good solutions in the market. And even that you buy is as a subscription more or less, you pay per month. You don't need to, to do any uh, deployments and upgrades or anything like that. We just, uh, okay, I, I just want to use it. So it's very different, uh, the products and what is the technology base of it and we have uh, yeah, I can imagine with all this, yeah, so big company had all possible different uh, technology bases and infrastructure of the product. So it's really different uh, how the, the information flows depending on how the product is built. Yeah. So yeah, we're getting out of time. So just fin almost finishing now. <laughs> yeah. So just for example, the, of the how a day a week could look like. For example, you could participate in agile ceremony. It could be a stand up every day or a demo in the end of the of the, the sprint or the PI in a planning. And then maybe you are working with a backlog item, analyzing it or designing or developing or testing. And like the other day, you could be discussing the product's strategy, vision, and direction. And then in the afternoon, maybe you work uh, with your stakeholders, collect requirements and feedback. And then the other day, you are testing, doing and trend testing cross products, for example. And then another day, you participate in procurement of a new solution, uh, supporting with uh, with uh, requirements for it or analyzing the answers and then maybe on friday you are learning new things you get into the some learning course and start studying or reading some book or something and most of important having fun all the way all the day every day <laughs> all the time <laughs> <laughs> so it's very important also as you, as we talk a lot uh, yeah to have fun because if you don't have fun in doing that you're not do a good job i think it's the most important that's important very much of, of any details but uh, that you think it's nice so it's good to have so many different possibilities that you can choose uh, what you think is fun yeah. <laughs> Yes, so yeah, that's it. And uh, yes, we are uh, recruiting lots of people, not only today, but we plan to what to to hire uh, two thousand engineers in the coming years, uh, two years or something. So it's very <laughs> all all around the world. So you can look at them. Uh, uh, career at hnm.com and look when it's time for you to do we have also this trainee uh, program when we are a little further in your course <laughs> yeah so that's super interesting and I I, I I thank you very much for for spending your your time and and talking about well 
the perspective of an engineer in H&M. I think this is super interesting. And I do hope that you get some, some contacts also from, from the students that are listening into this talk. Um, as I think that there, this, in my perspective, is the best way to for the academia also to evolve is to be like in a very close relationship with the industry. So whatever we do is relevant and, and vice versa. So, so. Yes, I, absolutely. I think, yeah, it's yeah. very important for us as well to uh, make people, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, not everybody thinks there's technology, uh, so much technology behind, but uh, start to thinking about that, of course, to, you cannot do anything without uh, some kind of program behind no. or software behind. So. Really and, and and also that there are like a lot of companies, not not only H and M, but that are like everyone is more or less working with technology, in in and and software uh, that is. Um, yes. So, uh, one thing that what you I I, I must ask because it's it's uh, really my area. But uh, you didn't mention anything about like uh, IoT, uh, which is sort of all companies like pursue that area in, in some form today, it feels like. But or, or, do you have like an, an anything with like connecting sensor on, 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 on clothes or in your value chain that you're asset tracking or? Yeah, it's good that uh, you asked, uh, didn't uh, thought about that. One thing that we have this RFID tags yeah. uh, in the clothes and that we can track all the way. And the idea is that you can track all the way from the farmer that is growing the cotton. Uh, and then you can see, and it's uh, connect to this sustainable uh, uh, choices that you can choose the things. And we ha also have, of, of course, sensors uh, in, the, uh, in the stores uh, to track the, how people walk in the stores so it's not cameras uh, of course because they're not supposed to, to be filming people but it's to to understand what's the flow and maybe it's a stop and many people in some place and how should you design the store so it's a bit get a better flow uh, and you, you have we have also this census uh, to count the number of customers so we can match then it and it's connected to this uh, data analysis that you see how many customers are entering the stores and how many are buying and this kind of stuff. So we have also uh, this sensors to to count people coming in, for example. So we have different kinds of, of, of things. Yeah. I, I think that there is so many possibilities for, yeah. for new things uh, when you think about it. Just, buying buying some kind of clothing and then you just throw it in the washing machine and it and the washing <laughs> machine might know the exact well how dirty it is or, or and what temperature yeah. and 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 all those things so uh, yeah. I, th I think there is still a lot of innovation to be done in this absolutely area, so. and you can even have the clothes uh, for example uh, we have this uh, if you think about the uh, uh, future a little more distance, but you could have, for example, clothes that are understanding your health status, socks that are checking your uh, your blood pressure for people with diabetes, for example. You could have socks that are saying, oh, now you need to do something, or that your heart is beating too fast or whatever. So you could have it in, in your clothes to check in the environment. It's too cold, that too hot, and then maybe the clothes could... Uh, get some difference. So there are lots of possibilities if you are creative or like s s get your mind yeah. just to to think about this cool A things. A new business that could... area for H&M, like in, in the yeah. health sector, that being a health, health service provider. <laughs> yeah, so, why not? <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, I, I thank you very much, Patricia. We have used, we have used our time, uh, even, even ex a little bit more than I planned, but yeah. it was probably my fault. I asked uh, too much questions. So uh, I thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll end this broadcast now. You, you might stay put and, and we can speak uh, later on. Uh, yes. So just stay. So thank you very thank much, you. Patricia. Thank you.